We've been looking at uh, stuff that goes back tens of thousands almost of years, uh, as well as stuff quite recent, and that's exactly what I'll be doing this morning as well, looking at stuff that was built just yesterday, but also stuff that was at least 3,000 years old. And I'd like to do it by uh, using Holland and Sweden, or the Netherlands and Sweden, as an example, and uh, we'll begin with Holland. Um, it's, where's the laser guy? Thank you. Um, the blue, this stuff is below sea level. And uh, so therefore the material that is there is relatively recent. Whereas the older sites are where the green is. Just to locate for you, Amsterdam, oh I love this button here, is right about there. Okay, this, for example, is called Flevoland, and it's only 40 or 50 years old, uh, whereas others of these places have been made land uh, before then. Okay, um, I, I guess I gotta t show you where I live in Holland. I, I, I actually live in Glastonbury, but uh, we have a flat in Holland in Enkhausen, and I've got the, uh, we've got the upper floor of this building. And the reason I show Enkhausen, um, I'm gonna just, but, uh, oh, wrong way. Uh, Enkhausen is here. And uh, the reason I'm showing this is because it's on, on one of the oldest dikes in, in Holland. As a matter of fact, the street that runs here is called Dijkstraatsche. And so it's, um, it's one of the earliest places that was uh, built to get some land in, in a place that was below sea level. And out our window uh, is uh, the Dromedaris, which is a wonderful, wonderful old building. It was actually built in about 1540. And uh, so it's got a million dollar view as well. But it also really, the sun is important there as well as the moon. It's a lovely, lovely town. I can't uh, tell you enough about it. Um, uh, this is also uh, one of the uh, places which is west of Enkhausen, and it's a holy well, uh, Hilo, and uh, that's Karen, my wife, and uh, it's one of the few places in western uh, Netherlands that I've visited. Whereas if we're gonna look at ancient Holland, uh, we've got to be looking at this green area, and we'll be predominantly looking at spaces in here and also up in here in Drenthe. Yes, there are dolmens, I suppose. I think it's always risky to be using the word dolmen anywhere but where they exist, i.e. in this island. Uh, for example, in the United States, I, or in the Western Hemisphere, I heard the word dolmen being used. And that implies that the Celts or the pre-Celts had something to do with the making of them, which I'm not so sure was the case. Uh, in New England, where I did most of my master's work, we call them per perched rocks. But in any event, this is one that looks like something you might find in this land. However, this is more to the point. Hunebeden, giant's graves. Uh, this is called Borger, it's up in Drenthe. It's, uh, it's a whole series of perched rocks, if you will. Marvelous ancient sites. They're probably 3000 BC, so this is the oldest, the oldest uh, uh, material that we'll be seeing uh, in Holland. Here's another Hunebeden, and the next shot is showing what it looks like, how, how far off the ground they are, not. And the problem with these things is, even to this day, there are idiots building fires under them and cracking the stones, just as there are people up at Pretty and the Nine Barrows destroying the wonderful rings that are above there, just out of ignorance. And it's very sad. We've got so few left. Uh, there are a lot of mounds in Holland. Uh, we could call them round barrows, but again, I'm not sure that's the right term, but they look like round barrows. Bronze Age, probably. But I'm more interested in, oh, wait, this isn't in Holland. Uh, 
Uh, I'm interested in truncated cones. And we'll see truncated cones both in the Netherlands and in Sweden. But just a quick aside while we're looking at Silbury, because it's a good example. Here I am standing on the West Kennet Long Barrow. And to the left is uh, Silbury. Uh, but it's in this area that I want to draw your attention. Uh, Baby Sill has already been mentioned. But I've been going there for 25 years. And only this year did I learn about Baby Sill. And it's actually not called Baby Sill uh, by the archaeologists. It's called Waden Mound because it's at the end of Waden Hill, which uh, splits Silbury from the West Kennet Avenue. And it's a truncated cone. So uh, it, it's, it's just so close to Silbury. And it is a truncated cone. I think that's a very exciting new find as far as I'm concerned. But in Holland, we have these truncated cones. This is called Tafelberg, which is Table Mountain. And uh, the top is indeed flat, just like Silbury Hill. There's even a table there. Uh, <clears throat> of even is the spirit of the land. She's a dangerous lady to mess around with. Uh, but she's also Mother Nature at the same time. And uh, nature spirits are connected with her. And you see she lives in what might be called truncated cones. And indeed, we went to her area. And this was a truncated cone. When we were there, kids were sledding down the side of her, of her mound. And uh, so these truncated mounds are found in lots of places. As in addition to Silbury and Holland, we'll see them in Sweden as well. Now, this is modern ancient Holland. <laughs> Uh, this is a labyrinth. Uh, I'm, it's one of the things that I'm very interested in are labyrinths. I'll talk a little bit more of them as we get into Sweden. But uh, this one was built by my sister-in-law, Sylvia Schluter, and it's in Drenthe, where the Hunebeden are. Uh, and then there's a place called Centrum Athenor, which uh, has various things. They have a labyrinth there and the stone ring. And here's the winter solstice sunset there. And so the astronomy is something that's very uh, important, as we've been hearing again and again in our time together this weekend. Uh, Dort Wegen, uh, take a look at this. Look at the lines that are coming together here. One, two, three, four, five, six. They are what might be called dead straight lines. Dort Wegen, dead ways. And indeed, the people from the surrounding towns would bring their dead along dead straight roads to the cemetery in the center there. And also right behind are round barrows, which show that they were using this place for burials uh, long before uh, these Dotwegen were uh, active around 1600 uh, BC, uh, CE, common era. Here's another one. Absolutely straight. Uh, here they're coming in. This, this road is coming into the center, to the crossing, where there is a cemetery. Modern. Now, these dead straight roads uh, are also found in Sweden. But let me just talk about dead straight and other things that are connected to those. Uh, there's this thing called a ruler that makes a straight line. And it also means the guy who's running the show. And I say guy usually because it's usually men. And reg is Sanskrit for the king. And these straight lines seem to be uh, something that were part of the patriarchal way of looking at ancient sites. But in any event, let's go to Sweden and take a look at a dead straight road. Uh, this one is uh, at uh, Rosaring, which is early, early Viking. And at the far end, way up at the top, is a charnel house. And they would bring them down. And I'm actually standing on a mound, uh, a series, one of a series of mounds that were uh, used where they buried people. Uh, here you can see again, starting at the top is the charnel house, the dead straight lines, going down to uh, a series of mounds. And also on the left-hand side, you can see labyrinth. Uh, 